Welcome to The Dig on the Huskers Radio Network podcast. Powered by Emeritus. Featuring Nebraska Volleyball Assistant Coach Jalen Reyes. Here's your host, Jessica Cootie. Welcome in to a special beach season edition of The Dig, powered by Emeritus, and we're excited to welcome back into the hot seat, Jalen Reyes. How's it going? Great. Thanks for having me. It's uh, been a minute. How's, it's been a while. Uh, how's everything been since the season ended? It's been awesome. Uh, had a much needed break. Girls got six weeks off ish, something like that. Um, we didn't start school until mid January, so that was kind of nice. And um, yeah, just. Once we started school again, kind of getting back in the, not the gym, but I guess we got into the sand over at Hawks, and the girls have been lifting weights, starting school, we got a couple new freshmen joining us, so it's been, uh, it's been awesome, and it's been nice outside, so last week we got to practice outside, which is very rare sometimes, you know, we're going to practice outside today and tomorrow, and we start our first match on Thursday, so looking forward to it. That's awesome. We're going to dive into all of that, but I did kind of want to get your perspective, and because everybody kind of handles things and manages things differently when a season ends. What, what do you do? What's your process like when the season is over, how you kind of, I guess, unwind, relax, reflect, all of that stuff? Well, th I mean, it's, uh, it's interesting since I've gotten here. You know, after the season, obviously, we all wish we were all one, be one match better at the end of the year. So I think obviously trying to unpack that a little bit um, from a emotional to a statistical to a what do we need to do better? What do we need to get better at? What do we do well? Because obviously I think we did a lot of things well. Um, so trying to figure that stuff out. But for, um, for me, especially just being the recruiting coordinator, it was roster management. So mm. I think people that have followed us, they know we have some players leaving that maybe we're leaving you know, before they were to finish their eligibility here, um, transferring to some other great schools. Um, and then we have some couple kids coming in. So it's just kind of managing your roster and seeing where you're at and who, who's still on your team. And, you know, kids that maybe we brought in, we got brought in a couple kids from the portal that I think are able to help us. And, and then, you know, kind of helping the freshmen, you know, make sure they got everything turned in. When you're graduating early, you always have these your school needs to provide proof of graduation and making sure they're elig NCAA eligible and all that's it's all paperwork stuff that sometimes gets a little bogged down with the holidays. So just I, I think a big part of my job at that time of the year was roster management. Um, our uh, our tech guy, Brian Magmatang, was kind of going through some interview process for assistant coaching jobs. So kind of already starting to prep, we might have to replace him and he got a great job at UNLV. So we're tr replacing him. So it's, uh, it's kind of, you know, out with the old, in with the new, I guess, a little bit. That's kind of what I felt like my, since the end of December till now, is just trying to make sure, hey, still putting the building blocks in for next season, you know? And then obviously, um, you know, and then forging plans for the, you know, the kids coming back to get better. And, you know, hopefully we can get back to the Final Four in Louisville next year. We hadn't had you on, um, so congratulations, first of all. It was exciting news back in December, contract extension and raise. Um, take me through that and your decision to want to stay here and be a part of this and what that meant to you to, to be able to receive that. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm so happy. I, I really feel like this is the best place. This is the best college volleyball program in the country. Um, just the, the amount of support that I think all of us feel from the community, from administration, from the media, from, I mean, the state and the fans, uh, play, makes this place second to none. So I, if I'm being honest with you, I wasn't really looking to go anywhere. Um, there's always people think I'm taking some sort of job or I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm like, really? How, uh, when did I sign? How much am I making? What, like, what's the, how long is my contract? So it's, I don't know. It's, uh, it was nice. I think the timing of it was great. Coach had a plan to try to have it um, taken care of and announced before the Final Four. Yeah. So there's no, so I can just focus on, co focus on coaching Nebraska. So that was huge. You know, some, con some, uh, some co uh, even some contact with some of our current players, some of our, some of the kids that we've talked to to come in here um, in the portal. They even had questions about Jalen being here and stuff like that. So. I'm just happy that's, that got put to bed way before we got to the Final Four. So, I mean, it's already a distraction. I definitely didn't want to take any part of that. So um, it was just nice to kind of get that. Coach, you know, I really enjoy working for him, and 
you know, I really enjoy working in this volleyball program. And he asked if I would, you know, would like to, you know, kind of continue my time here and stuff like that. And um, I told him, yeah, I'm all in for sure. And uh, I think part of it is, is too, is just I really love working with the girls that are on our team. And they're um, honestly the biggest reason why I come to work every day. So mm. um, no reason for Jalen to leave. And I'm happy I'm still wanted around. And yeah, I try to make sure that got taken care of as soon as it could. So that way we could just keep focusing on volleyball. So. It's got to be rewarding, though, to know, okay, the work that you're doing is valued and, and you're appreciated and wanted here, too. For sure. In addition I, to want, wanting to be here, but that, you know, they see yeah. the value in what you're bringing to this program. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, I, I mean, I remember even when Coach brought me in his office, it was during the season, and he talked to me about it, and it was a little awkward. Like, I'm not, I don't know, especially during the season, you're just focused on, like, winning the next match mm -hmm. or doing the next thing, you know, you don't anticipate these kind of things, or I don't, if that makes, that's just how I, I kind of, kind of a live life a quarter mile at a time person, you know, so, um, yeah, I'm happy that he wanted, he wanted me to be here, I think, um, you know, coach is one of the greatest of all time, and the fact that he still wants me to be a part of his volleyball program means a lot to me, just because I've, uh, you know, I've really followed his career up to when I got to work for him, and the fact that I still get to work for him means a lot to me, and, you know, as much as, you know, he wants me around, I, I think, 10 times want to be here. So it, there wasn't that much convincing that needed to happen <laughs> or, you know, it wasn't. And I wanted to make sure that our girls know that Jalen's here for the, you know, for the near future. And, you know, if I'm being honest, I hope to be here, you know, years down the road. So now you move into beach season. Um, how much do you enjoy coaching beach? I love coaching beach volleyball. You and grew up playing on the beach, right? I grew up playing. Um, I go home. I went home in the Christmas, uh, Christmas time, and I spent a good amount of time playing and hanging out at the Outrigger Canoe Club for any, any volleyball fans or people that have gone to Hawaii. Outrigger's kind of a, it's a canoe paddling club on the, down on the beach in Waikiki, but they have beach volleyball courts, and that's kind of where I grew up playing beach volleyball. And kind of, you know, when I decided I wanted to be a volleyball player when I was a kid, it was Instead of going to the beach and going to the water and going surfing, it was stay on the beach and play volleyball. So I think I probably, as a youth, for sure played in, pl probably played more beach growing up than I did even indoor volleyball before I went to college. Um, I mean, it's just, uh, this is, I remember my first year coaching beach here. So it was 2019 was my f uh, first beach season. And, um, you know, we go to Hawaii every year, which, you know, is, is awesome. And... The first day we get out there, it's a practice. We get out there early. It's like 7.30 a.m., but we flew in the night before. So all of us were up really early. So 7.30 really didn't feel that early. And I walk out there, and it's like the beach I literally grew up playing. And you just kind of walk out there. You're about to start practice. I'm talking to the team. And it's just like where I used to surf is huh. right in the background. Where I used to jump off the wall at Waikiki is right there. Where I used to grow up boogie boarding. is. It's just... I'm sitting there kind of having this moment of like, man, this is kind of awesome, <laughs> you know? And um, I, yeah, I think obviously indoor volleyball is kind of where my heart is. And obviously just there's more opportunity in this part of the sport. Obviously beach is growing, but I mean, I, I kind of sometimes envy the beach coaches around the country of like, man, they get to kind of do this every day and be outside and, and stuff like that. But I, I really enjoy the game. I, it's as much as they are similar, they're very different in certain ways. Um, but I, I really enjoy the challenge of like coaching volleyball, but it's different, a different brand of volleyball. Yeah. What are the benefits for an indoor team playing beach during this time of the year? I think there's a lot. I think the first thing is honestly the break. Just yeah. the, just it, not even the physical toll, but like some of the, the mental toll of going on the run we did. And, and not even just, not how it ended, because obviously we wish it, if it ended a little different, but just the ups and downs of that whole season where we started last year at this time, and then we went into indoor season, then we went to Brazil, which we go every four years, but that's a, makes the summer long. You know, it just, it, we're here for 10 days training and then we go to, go to Brazil for two weeks. That's time that normally they have off, you know, and as much as it helped us, it just makes the season really long. And then the summer time's here and the next thing you know, August comes, and then we go through this ride, and it was an awesome ride of undefeated to 92,000 people in the stadium to a Big Ten championship to this undefeated streak to all these, like, ups and downs that go through the season. And obviously having, having it to come to a crashing halt at the end where, you know, we were one match short, it's just, it's exhausting, you know? Yeah. And I think 
the time the girls get to spend out of the gym from when, they, when they're young, they just play volleyball all year round inside from club to USA camps to college camps to high school. And it just literally keeps re repeating itself all year round for some of these kids. And some of our girls have been playing volleyball since they're 10, 11, 12. I mean, they've been playing it for a long time. Some of them, this is probably the longest indoor volleyball break they've ever gotten, you know, when, once they get to college. And kind of people look at it a little opposite. But for us, it's, I think it's much needed. So I think that's the first thing that it provides. The next thing is, is um, it allows them to work harder in the weight room. So the fact that we're on sand, it's just easier on your body. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not easy to play, but just in terms of the pounding on your joints each and every day, it's much easier moving around in, in sand than it is indoor. So it allows them to lift weights and get stronger. So this is like the time of the year where we really focus on like making some strength and weight gains and you know, making some gains in vertical jump or speed or whatever, they, whatever individually they're working on. We can really push them in the weight room now because we're not worried about training five days or six days uh, during the week um, on indoor surface. So we practice three days a week. Last week we practiced four days a week. So, but compared to our indoor season, it's much less time around volleyball, much more time around weights, much more time around school, much more time around the things they need to get better at. So um, that break and then just, I think the volleyball indoor has become pretty specialized. Maybe not as specialized as football or as baseball would be, but it's very much, if I'm a setter, I pretty much yeah. set. I maybe dig, I serve, I block. I don't really ever get to hit. I don't ever really get to pass. If I'm Lexi Rodriguez or Lainey Choboy, I don't really ever hit or block or worry about, you know, um, setting. To my, maybe a little bit setting, but I don't ever hit or block, you know, and vice versa. Maybe an outside's the only one that really kind of does all the skills indoor. But now beach, everyone has to do everything. Yeah. Middles have to pass. So you'll get to see Andy Jackson pass and then go hit, which you never really see her do indoor. Or Andy Jackson will set. Or Lexi Rodriguez will hit, which people really don't get to see ever indoor. So I think just working on the well-rounded, kind of building the whole volleyball player. That's yeah. kind of what we talk about in recruiting here is like, we want to train the complete volleyball player. We feel like beach kind of helps do that because it literally has them um, perform all the skills under pressure um, over and over again. And, and I think the other thing too, it's beach volleyball is very much, um, there's so many factors that go into it, especially once you add the elements of playing outside. Sometimes it's just like the team that plays together the best and also is able to strategize or understand, okay, what are our strengths? How do we use the factors around us to help us win? So for me, like beach players that win a lot, they're those kids that when they come to indoor, there's no surprise why they, when they still keep winning, you know, and why they're the ones indoor, why they help us figure out how are we gonna win this match tonight? You can really see that in like our girls and who, who are the ones that can kind of help drive that. You can really see that in beach because it's, you're only relying on you and somebody else. You don't have five other people around you to help support you. So you really can't hide. Yeah. You know, you really have, uh, you really are the ones that are driving the bus to win. You don't really win on accident, if that makes sense. Versus an indoor, you can kind of be a player that maybe we hide in serve receive or we take out in the front row. We, you don't get to serve, right? So there's just more people that are able to kind of help contribute on indoor. Beach, it's kind of like, it's you and me, Jess, and we have to figure out how to beat Team A over there. You yeah. know, and, and there's no, you can't hide Jalen because he can't pass or he can't hit or he can't serve because I have to do those things if you're going to win. And you really can't beat the other team by yourself. You kind of need me. So how do you elevate Jalen to help you win? And you really get to see that in beach volleyball compared to indoor volleyball more often, most often. That's fascinating, fascinating. So we had Lexi on um, a couple weeks ago, and she said she loves beach because she gets to hit. How is Lexi as a hitter? She's awesome. She, <laughs> Lexi Rodriguez is such a good volleyball player. And, you know, I think I'm, you know, I'm probably speaking to the choir here of like, well, yeah, Jalen, she's a three-time <laughs> All-American, probably going to be an Olympian someday. You, you see Lexi as a, as a passer and a digger and a setter, right? Like when you see her play in the Devaney Center. But she can hit. She can set. She's actually a very, and on the beach when I say blocker, it's not necessarily like when you think of blocking an indoor. Sometimes in beach, sometimes most of the time, you pick to pull off the net and not block. She actually has a really good understanding of when to do that. She does a really good job of also when she gets served, 
instead of passing it to someone to set her, she like understands and obviously has the ball control enough to like set the other person, hit it over on two, which is a big thing in beach volleyball, which as an indoor player, you have to teach them to like beach, even though yes, you have three contacts in beach volleyball, most of the time you shouldn't use them. Huh. You should just go over on one and two, but as, a, as an indoor volleyball player, you just grow up learning pass, set, hit, dig, pass, set, hit. Like that's the cycle that everyone realizes, maybe besides an indoor volleyball, a setter dump, everything else is usually going over on the third contact besides the serve. In beach volleyball, it's a serve and you might get a pass and a hit, you know? So Lexi's one of those who's like really figured out, even a couple years ago from day one, kind of what her strength is and her strength is passing. So she just gets it up to the net. In the last couple of years, she's been playing with Becca Alec, and Becca just hits the ball. So hmm. Lexi will probably be playing with a different partner this year just because Becca's going to be out for this season probably. But, um, yeah, I mean, she can hit, but she's also just such a good volleyball player. She, she's one of those that understands how can I use our skill sets to help win, and if the other person may be a better physical attacker, she's like, oh, I'll just pass it up to you. <laughs> you just hit it. So, um, She's not just a great hitter. She's a great, great volleyball yeah. player that really loves the sport. So how do you go about then putting the pairs together? I don't know. You tell me. I'm having a hard time right now. <laughs> really? No, I think, I, I think you try to... So for people that don't know, maybe know how it works, the format of it. So yeah, it's that's not it. A, it's not a tell three us. sets by two points and win three out of five sets, like how it is in indoor. Think of each match, there's five, there's five pairs. That we, you play a six match, but it's an exhibition match. So you have pairs one through five, and each individual pair is going to play a match with the, the first and second set you played a 21, and then if you have to play a tiebreak set to th uh, in the third set, you played a 15. The, the, the school that wins three out of those five matches wins the duel. So it's not always about putting maybe necessarily your best two players together, because even if you win that match, you still have to figure out a way to win two out of the other four. Yeah. So for me, what's, what's, what's I'm going, what K Kelly and I are going through right now is we're trying to find out what's the best for all six teams, not just, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to put these two teams together and then kind of just hodgepodge the rest. It's like we're trying to figure out what's to do with all of that. And then I think the other thing that is important is – Sure, we're going to compete against some really good teams. We, exp we, we go out there, we want to win as many games as we can. But at the same time, we're using, we use this season to help prepare us for the indoor season. So I also want to make sure it's, it's a really good experience for everybody too, if that makes sense. So part of that is the trips, part of that is the training, part of that is, you know, like I said, the time off. But part of it is also is like putting them with people that helps elevate them to win mm. and sometimes it's you put somebody together because hey this person needs a kick in the butt and this other person will provide that sometimes it's like you put these two people together because their personalities just mesh really well together mm. and they're able to play sometimes you also just put someone together because shoot they've been playing a couple maybe they played last year together so part of it is is in a partnership is if you if you have a familiar familiarity with each other that helps too so that's why it's hard because it's just there's so many little factors. You always try to have maybe somebody that can block on a team and maybe who someone can be a defender because to a degree you don't want, if you play two small people together, sometimes it's hard when you play up against a team where you need a block. And if they can't block, then they're gonna have a hard time. So it's just, there's all these little factors. And if, you, if, you, if I'm being honest with you right now, Jess, we've made no decisions on really? who we're playing together. We have some ideas of, okay, player A is probably gonna play with either B or C and maybe not D or E, but we haven't, okay, this is in concrete, concrete, concrete. And part of that is, is honestly, everyone has been playing really, really well. The two freshmen have come in and they've, they've done great. Um, we have a, a girl that's joining us from actually the club team that's, that's come in and she's done really well. Allie Batenhorst, I don't know if people know this, but she's, gonna, she's spending the semester here, so she's gonna be playing before she heads off to USC um, you know, next semester. So we have this, like, this interesting mix of characters and stuff like that, and we have a lot of returners that have played together too. So I think it's like trying to factor who plays well together, who doesn't, what skill sets fit. Sometimes, too, you have someone is maybe built better to hit on the right and hit on the left. So maybe they play well together versus some, two players that are like, hey, we're both better on the left. 
maybe you wouldn't want to play them together because they both can't play on the left. Hmm. One has to play on the right, one has to play on the left and serve receive. So it's, uh, there's a lot of factors we're going through them. We're kind of dialing it in, obviously, since the first match is on Thursday. But to all the Husker fans out there, this is not coach talk. This is not, <laughs> this is not uh, you know, um, Bill Belichick or uh, Greg Popovich <laughs> talk. This is like Jalen, as of right now, doesn't have his like full six teams together. I wow. think I have a few. We have a few, but we're still trying to go through it. And then the nice part is we have two great 65, 67 days here, I think, um, today and tomorrow to go practice outside. So we're going to go do that. And, you know, we kind of, I kind of told them, honestly, like you guys are going to help me figure this out. And who we see play well together, that's who you're going to play with. And if you want to play, if you guys want to play with, if you want to play with a specific partner, when you guys get your chance to play together, show me you guys can perform well together, you know? And for me, I think I'm trying to leave it up to them and to a degree. And of course, we'll have the final say, but a lot of it is, is being figured out by them. And I, that's, for me, that's how I'd, I would want it as a player. Who most, and this is hypothetical, but out of all the players, who most likely would have the potential to be a beach Olympian? Beach volleyball Olympian. Like, who is the best, who has the best skill set to play beach volleyball? Hmm. I, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of sad, and I might be breaking news here. I don't think so. I think Coach talked about this, about Becca. I think Becca really could. Hmm. Becca has a really good, unique skill set because... One, she has size, and um, I don't know how much people will follow beach volleyball, but the average beach volleyball player, if you were to stack them, if you were to take the top five beach volleyball teams and put them next to the top five indoor volleyball teams, the indoor volleyball team is on average going to be bigger size-wise, taller, and stuff like that. Um, so one, Becca's like, Becca could probably go to another beach team and she'll be behind in skill because she doesn't play it all the time. But in terms of physicality, in terms of the, being able to move and like move around in the sand as gracefully, honestly, as she can for someone who honestly didn't grow up in, in the, it's yeah. not like she grew up in the beach somewhere. Yeah. So if she was from Hawaii, it'd be like, okay, that makes sense. That's where she grew up or from California. You know, she grew up here in Lincoln. So for somebody who can move that way with really She's probably practiced in two years. She's probably had 25 beach practices. Wow. She's probably, I think she played a little bit in clubs. So let's just say she had no more than 50 beach practices in her life. Okay. So like, for an example, a normal beach team is going to have 50 of them in a semester of school, right? So in three or four years, Becca has maybe had 40 beach practices. Wow. You know, so she also has the skill set where she can perform a lot of the skills. She can pass. Um, she obviously can hit. She has the size and athleticism. She's a really, actually a really good blocker on the beach. She actually might be a better block, a beach blocker than she is an indoor blocker. Really? She's a great indoor blocker. Um, two degree blocking in the beach is a little bit easier because you kind of know who's going to get set versus <laughs> you don't have three options where you have yeah. to run around to go block. Um, she but it's can, still not easy to jump in the sand. Yes. And the other thing, too, though, is she can handset. And um, for those who follow beach, handsetting is different. So they're, they're kind of going to go away with the double contact rule in indoor volleyball. Beach volleyball, it's like laser tight. If there's any type of spin, they pretty much call it if you use your hands. And Becca is a pretty good handsetter for, again, for someone who doesn't really play it. So, um, you know, I would say, honestly, if Becca were to, like, pursue that after she just walked in by the way oh really that's funny <laughs> i think if becca really were really to pursue beach after she's done with her indoor career i think she would she has the the skill set and i her and i have had the the talks like she loves playing beach too i think she would have the skill set there's a bunch of others on her team that yeah. would have it yeah but i think becca just one she's also one of the more experienced ones i've coached her for two years even though she's not playing this year so i kind of have a feel of like whenever she She's been playing like the ones or twos, which you think about it for someone who's never played beach, her first beach match is like in the ones position against a ranked team. I can't remember who we played a couple years ago, but it was down in Florida. And she performed really well to even the other college coaches are all like, wait, that girl's a freshman. This is two years ago. And I'll even have some of our, some of my beach volleyball coaches kind of always asking about Becca, like, hey, if she ever wants to take her fifth year somewhere and play beach, we'd love to have her. So I think there's a lot of girls on our team, but I think Becca's one just because she also, she also in beach, she also is able to finesse the ball around when she attacks. So beach volleyball, you can be really good and not hit the ball hard one time. Yeah. 
indoor volleyball, you have to hit it hard. If you can't hit it hard, there's a ceiling for you eventually, especially as an attacker. Beach volleyball, beach volleyball, you can get away with hitting hard, but also you can get away with shooting the ball around. She actually has a very good touch with all that stuff. For, again, someone who hasn't really, like, relatively speaking, hasn't played this sport, really. So I think she has the best skill set because of she has a mix of finesse, skill, and the physicality to kind of, she can be a blocker at that level because she has the size and the capability to do it. Fascinating. Um, some people might be wondering, how are the facilities that you have to work with for, for Beach and this team? It's awesome. Um, I wish we had one more court. That's just me. <laughs> You know, that's just that'd be the only thing. But just we, you putting it out there. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we have we have a court in the Hawks Championship Center. It's on the back end, and it's the the sand itself and the court itself is first class. I mean, it's really really deep. It's probably for those who follow beach volleyball, it's as, as deep as Hermosa Beach, where USA Beach, um, USA Beach volleyball trains in California. That our sand is so deep, it, it's 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 actually kind of hard. Like the first couple of weeks when the girls finally get in there, even if they've been in there before, just getting used to just moving around in it. And then when we go to, when we go to play at other places, we can really jump because we're, we're training in this really deep stuff. And it's funny, the first years never believe me. Like, trust me, this is going to be the hardest sand we play in all year. Huh. And then we go to other places and it's like, man, Jim, I can really jump. I'm like, well, yeah, because the sand is not like a foot and a half deep, you know? So it's, uh, this, the, the facilities are awesome. Um, we kind of do it where they lift weights and they come to practice, so it's really nice because literally they just literally walk on the other side of the curtain. Um, and then whenever we play our home matches here, the, the reason I wish, we ha I wish we had two courts is right now the way we have to do it is we literally have to just line up and play six matches in a row. So it takes a little longer um, than it would at some, if you even had two courts where you could play, you could start time. off and play the twos and fours first, and you could play the fives and sixes and then the ones and uh, and then the ones and threes. So you could kind of, you could do it in half the time, if that makes sense. And it's, uh, if you ever get to go to like a beach duel somewhere, whether it's the championships or whether it's if you go out to California or if you go to Arizona or LSU or we're going to be going this year, it's really, really fascinating when you watch the beach volleyball teams because sometimes they're operating with no coach because there's a couple coaches and there's five matches going on. So physically, we, Kelly and I can't be everywhere at the same yeah. time. So it's like, the other thing about volleyball, when I talked about like the kids who figure out how to, how to win, because sometimes you have to do it without a coach there. Or sometimes I'll show up at 12-12 playing to 15 in the third set, and I'll go, what's the plan? Like, I have no idea, <laughs> which is kind of, for me as one that's like, people see me out on the sideline and I'm talking during the game, I can't do that in beach volleyball. Hmm. And for me, it's great because it's like, you let the kids figure it out. Yeah. You help them in timeouts, you help them when you switch sides. I don't know if people know this, but in beach, you switch every seven points. Um, because the, the weather is a factor, so it, you give everyone a chance to play on um, both sides during a set. But it's, it's such a cool sport because the coaches don't have as much influence. And I know that sounds weird coming from a coach, but like the athletes have so much power in beach volleyball because the coaches don't call the timeouts, the athletes do. The coaches can't give feedback after every single point. I can't even say from the sideline if a ball's in or out. Like the rules prevent it. So it's... If I got to, if I wish we had beach volleyball when I got to play, because it's really, you, you really learn about kids and their way of being able to problem solve and figure out stuff and honestly work together and communicate because they kind of don't have anybody else they can to besides their partner. How would you and Kelly be as a beach duo? It'd be great. It'd be great. <laughs> She'd have to carry me because she carries me. When, we actually play, we play a good amount of beach together. We'll play against some of our GAs in our, in our indoor court and, uh, She's a really, really good player. I mean, I think probably a lot of you guys remember her as a player indoor, and obviously she played beach for the Huskers too. But Kelly's a really, really good player. I mean, we'll play, and she'll, she'll play on the, for people that don't know, on a, when I say a men's net, the men's net is about seven, eight inches higher than a, than a girl's net is. She'll play with us on the boys' net, and she'll hang with, on the boys' net. So mm -hmm. it's not, we don't play on the girls' net because we're playing with her. Like, she'll play on the boys' net, and she'll hang. And we'll, her and I typically play, I've played a fair amount of beach together throughout the years so she's pretty good and she's she's competitive just like I am so she'd be one to definitely hey we need to do this if we want to beat this team kind of a thing <laughs> well you open up this weekend and then you guys have again you go on some trips and it's a fun season what are you looking for as a head coach out of the team this weekend to accomplish I think one some clarity on who we're playing together <laughs> with I think that would help obviously it's going to start today in practice just 
I want to see us get better, and I want to see us, I guess, use this as a launching point to like hopefully what finishes in December, you know, for us, and hopefully it's in Louisville, you know, and um, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the new freshman Olivia Olivia Malk and uh, Skylar Pierce. Finally, you know, it seems like they've been committed to Nebraska forever, and so it's. It's fun to get to, you know, this is going to be kind of the first, their first game in a Nebraska jersey, you know? And um, the other thing, honestly, I'm looking forward to, besides watching the whole team compete, is getting to coach Allie Batenhorst for one more time. You know, yeah. this is going to probably be the last time I get to a little, little burst from, you know, starting this Thursday to about March 16th, I think is our last game. Um, this is going to probably be the last time I get to coach her before she heads off, um, you know, to Southern California, you know? So... I'm looking forward to coaching Allie, and I've had a great relationship with Allie since this whole, since she's, I mean, I remember it was like yesterday, she committed to Nebraska back when she was a freshman or sophomore in high school. So it's been crazy that I've been here for that long. But, um, you know, I think there's a lot of things I'm looking forward to. Of course, the trips are awesome. And we're going to get to go to LSU, and people that don't know, LSU is kind of, uh, you, I would say UCLA and USC on the women's beach volleyball side are probably the two best programs, and there's probably, you probably throw in Pepperdine, Hawaii, Long Beach, Cal Poly, Florida State, TCU, and LSU are kind of the, the, probably that next tier right under them. And LSU has this, like, they've built this, like, stadium for beach volleyball. Wow. And I've never been there, but it looks awesome. And it's like they kind of have, they have, they have, like, bleacher seating on one side. And then I believe on the other side they have almost, like, they have this big scoreboard. So it has all the scores for each court. So it's easier. You could be a fan and sitting on court four and follow the score on right. court one. But then they also have on the other side, I think they have like the beach cabana vibe to it. <laughs> and we're going to play them at night. And everyone talks about like night games at Death Valley on football. So I'm going to, you know, we're going to kind of hype that up for our girls. Like we're going to get to play at Death Valley at night, you know, and kind of like that. So probably won't be as loud as their football stadium. But it's, uh, I've seen games of there. And I think one year they upset UCLA there at night. And it was, I mean, I hate to use this word, but it's almost as much of a party as it is. A, yeah. You know, so I'm, th I'm looking forward to, to seeing that personally and just getting our girls like, hey, like, it's very rare for them where they get to go and experience a volleyball experience that's not like, whoa, that's not their own, right? They played in a football stadium. They played in the Devaney Center. We'll play at, we're going to, you know, we'll play, we'll play in a small town somewhere in Nebraska every single spring that becomes this huge event. It's going to be kind of cool for them, I think, for them to see, um, you know, an event where this isn't a Nebraska event that's like pretty first class or maybe Absolutely. unique, you yeah. know? So I think it's very rare for them because a lot of that stuff happens with us, you know? Yeah. And then the other thing that I'm looking forward to, and I think, the, I think honestly the girls look forward to it too, is whenever we go to Hawaii and California, we, we go and watch the boys play. So there's men's college volleyball players that either a lot of our girls are friends with when they grow up and play USA or they meet in college or they meet, you know, when they go out to USA and do the national team stuff. So it's like they get to go watch them play. So last year we went to a couple of Hawaii matches when we were in Honolulu. We watched them play UCLA and Penn State. And then we went to California. We watched UC Santa Barbara play UC Irvine. And we'll get to do that, all those things again. And I get to see the men's coaches and then our girls get to kind of hang out with the guys and stuff like that. So it's, it's a... It's a business trip for sure, but it's like there's a lot of social things we do on the trip that help our team build, but also like we want to give the girls an experience. So then one thing we're also going to do this year is we're actually going to go to the Big Island, which is different, you know. Um, we're going to go to, it's the island where the volcano erupts, for people that know, know when I say the Big <laughs> Island. Um, it's, if you look at the Hawaiian chain, it's the one on the bottom right, and it's the, big, the biggest island, Big Island. Um, there's a school over there that literally is just kind of kind of put together a sand team so we can go over there and play them. Oh, that's and cool. It's going to be experience for them just because they're going to get to, you know, they're going to get to play against Harper Murray and Lexi Rodriguez and Bergen Riley and Allie Batenhorst, you know, and all, and all of our other girls. But at the same time, like, our girls, none of our girls have ever been to the Big Island before. And last year we had an experience in Hawaii like no other. Coach wanted to do something different. So I just thought, like, why don't we go to another island? That'd be kind of cool. And maybe an experience the girls would never ever have if they hadn't do this. So as much of it is as a volleyball thing, it's team building and we want to try to give the girls, hey, you come to Nebraska, you're going to get an experience that's different than any, any other place. And we're going to, we kind of use beach volleyball as kind of a vessel to do that to a degree. 
All right. Well, a non volleyball question. There's a, some pictures, some video floating around. You got a chance to sit with Dylan Raiola at a basketball <sighs> game recently, and I think there's a long line for people to get his autograph. But how's it been getting to know him? I'm sure you guys maybe have had a connection before. Yeah, I met him. I actually met him a couple years ago. Actually, it was when he was committed to uh, Georgia or committed. Ohio State. I think it was Ohio State yeah. before he switched. So. Um, my dad actually knew the Riola. So the Riolas are from, they're actually from Honolulu. His Donovan actually went to the same high school I did. And then I, before I went to high school at Kamehameha, I actually went to St. Louis, the football school that, um, that Dominic went to. So I actually, it's kind of weird. I went to both schools that huh. his dad and his uncle went to. Um, That's kind of how Hawaii yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, it's small. You, I mean, Hawaii is a you very, very small place. Connections. Oh yeah. And then um, when he recommitted, we just kind of got in touch and then... I kind of really talked to him a little bit on his visit, and then we kind of, yeah, we, we, I'd run into him around campus, and then we sat next to each other. Um, I think Trev gave us, me and Coach, his, uh, our, his seats because he wasn't going to, I think it was the Ohio State men's basketball game. And then he's come down, and next thing you know, it's like we're texting and stuff like that. And, you know, it's kind of funny. He, uh, there's a, in Hawaii, there's a, like a, you don't, you don't typically call like your friend's parents by their like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You kind of call them uncle and auntie. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny when young Hawaiian guys like myself, when we reach kind of our mid twenties, late thirties, that's kind of the time where people start calling us uncle, but we all kind of <laughs> like, whoa, why are you calling us uncle? You're calling me old kind of a thing. You're not talking to me, you know? But now that my, my siblings have kids, I'm actually am an uncle. So I'm like, cool with it. So he out of nowhere, Dylan's kind of like, hey, coach, I call everybody coach. Can I just call you uncle? <laughs> and I'm like, you know what, Dylan? I'd be honored to if you oh, call me uncle. Amazing. So he calls me uncle, even though I feel like I'm definitely closer to his age than I am even his uncle or his dad's age. But, you know, it's cool. It's cool you having another Polynesian it. around. And I think uh, I'm really excited for that group too. And, I, you know, obviously there's a lot of, like, I think they did a great job, obviously, in recruiting the portal, obviously getting Dylan and signing the class they signed. I think a couple of his freshmen did really well out at the Polynesian Bowl. And I was actually there that week, um, which was kind of funny. That, the, that's actually where we, I went to high school, where they played that game. Wow. So all the connections are kind of funny and stuff like that. And it's, uh, it's actually really interesting talking to him about kind of his recruitment and, you know, who he trains with. And, you know, I've seen him... Um, he'll text me when we're at practice and he's actually right through the wall at Hawks kind of doing a private like flexibility workout that I don't know I hope I'm not kind of giving away his secrets but he's he's kind of worked with Patrick Mahomes um, trainer on some of the stuff he's working on and not like I know anything of what they're talking about but I do know Patrick Mahomes is a pretty good quarterback <laughs> and I'd probably want to try to copy what he's doing right now yeah. so um, you know, I, I wish nothing but them but the best, and I'm excited for, I mean, whoever the quarterback is. And it's, it's cool to have, again, it's just cool to have another Polynesian kid running around here. You know, Uncle so. Jalen. Uncle Jalen, I guess. <laughs> you know? I don't know if, I, I, don't know if ever, I want everyone calling me that, but <laughs> Dylan Dylan right. Rayola can call me that. <laughs> That's so, awesome. As long Thank as he throws it to our team this year. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much for your time, and best of luck this week, and we'll look forward to the beach season unfolding. Thanks, Jess. Again, that is Jalen Reyes here on The Dig, powered by Emeritus. Thanks for listening, and as always, make sure you subscribe and like wherever you listen. Listen, never miss an episode right here on the Huskers Radio Network podcast.